I want to talk today about type 1 diabetes. I'm a mum of a child with type 1 diabetes. Jack's 16 and he was diagnosed when he was 10. So we've been living with it for quite some time now. And it's not something I've talked about on my YouTube channel, which I suppose really I, I feel like I should because I never forget when he was first diagnosed and how I felt and you just feel like you've been given all these medical facts and and details but you don't know how it's going to pan out and you, you don't, it's like your whole world is, is torn apart and you've no one to talk to about it. So I thought I'd just, I'm going to do a few different vlogs talking about it but I'm going to start at the beginning which was diagnosis. So we started getting the classic signs, the, the needing to, to wee all the time, um, grumpiness, and not really the, the weight loss at first, but I started to notice that, you know, wherever you go, it was constantly, I need a loo, and need the loo, I'm, I'm thirsty. And it, it was going on for a couple of weeks, it was going on a cruise, and it wasn't ill, so I couldn't put my finger on it. You know, you think, oh, is it hormones? Is it just get, going into a really painful teenage situation so we went on the cruise and we didn't have an awful holiday but it was hard because he was just he was unbearable he was really really moody constantly throughout the night keep needing to go to the loo thirsty all the time and because we didn't know what it was we, we just thought i don't know just been a pain i think we just we stopped him from having fizzy drinks and made him drink fresh juice and said, right, well, you know, while we're away, you just have to drink fresh juice and water, which was the worst thing we could have done because fresh juice is full of natural sugar. So the whole week we were away, it was just, it was grumpy, really, really grumpy. Just couldn't put a finger on what was wrong with him. He wasn't ill. There was no reason for him to see a doctor. So we came home and I just had this niggling feeling that it was diabetes. I've got two cousins that have got diabetes both in a really bad way, both probably got, I'd say, some of the worst symptoms you can get, definitely, with the condition, so I know how it can affect your life in a negative way, but they were diagnosed younger, medical science isn't what it, wasn't what it is today, so I took him to the doctors, and in my mind I was thinking, I'm wishing this on him, and that's how I felt, because he wasn't ill, like I say, so I phoned is it 111 now? I can't remember what NHS Direct, whatever it is, and spoke to a lady on the phone and she said, there's probably nothing wrong, but because, you know, as a parent, you, you instinct, I think you should take him and just get him checked out at the emergency centre. So we took him and the doctor looked at him and said, he couldn't possibly have type 1 diabetes. He's, he's walked in. He's, he, I'll test his urine, but it'll be fine, but I'll do it, it was a bit like, well, I'll do it to put your mind at rest, so, okay, great, so we did it, so we went and sat in the waiting room, we were going to a football match, and he came out and said, right, okay, well, I'll arrange for you to go to the hospital, so we were like, oh, okay, he said, because there is something there, okay, can, so can you book us in for next week, he said, no, you go now, when we arrived at the hospital, there was a full crash team waiting for us, and they came out the door, and looked at him, and the, the sister said, oh, there's been a mistake, because we're, we're expecting a hyperglycemic child. You can't be Jack Christie. And was like, no, 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 this is. So she said, oh, there's been a mistake. Come in, I'll, I'll, we'll test his blood. You'll be out of here before you know it. Tested his blood, and all hell broke loose. It was just like chaos. The doctor, to be quite honest, I've never seen anything like it before, because the doctor was quite panicky, kept shaking, and he, as he was trying to get the bloods out of him, because he kept taking more and more bloods, I, I just remember it was running all down the bed, and no one was telling us anything. They mentioned something about liver failure, and it was just like sheer panic. And then just like an angel, this nurse walked in, and he said, I'm, I'm covering today, I shouldn't even be here. I'm a diabetic nurse, and I, as I said, I wouldn't usually work on this ward, but... He's got diabetes. I'll tell you now, it's type 1 diabetes, but they'd have to do all these tests. So let him do the tests, but just stay calm. And we'll start, We'll probably start treating him as soon as we've got confirmation. But this is my specialist area. I'm confident that's what's wrong with him. 
So I think it took 12 hours for it, all the results to come through and then it was, we, they kept us in for four days and I stayed in with Jack and it was just training all the time. So training us how to, how to do injections. I, I was scared of needles and didn't like blood. So I had to get over that pretty quick and how to, to get your head around living with the condition. So we started straight away carb counting and in my mind, I just remember thinking, how we deal with this is the way he will deal with it for the rest of his life. So I, I remember being sat by his bed and I remember wanting to scream and cry and all the panic and the fear that goes through you and you just, why him? Um, and I sat and smiled and I was like, it's fine, we can deal with this Jack, this is going to be fine. I don't if it was awful. <laughs> um, I'm not even that emotional. It was awful. It was. It was just. I just remember probably that being one of the single most single worst moments of my life. But when your child's left there and they've got a health condition that's going to affect everything they do forever, you've no choice. You've got to be positive. So we were. We were positive and we got through it. We came home and the first thing I did was I googled all the celebrities and sports personalities that were type 1 diabetic. I went and listened to Steve Cram, um, there's loads oh, off the top of my head, I can't even think of them now. Um, Andrew Lloyd Webber, quite a lot of sports personalities. It's, it's incredible, actually, the people that you just wouldn't even know live with type 1. And we came home and we started to deal with it just day to day, learning how to carb count, learning how to do the injections, how to get the ratios right. We don't always get it right. This last couple of months we've got it quite wrong, but that's because he's grown. But oh, all I can say to you is, if, you, if you've got to a stage in the video watching, you, I, you must probably have experienced a recent diagnosis. It, it, it gets easier. You learn to live with it. And I've come to think that actually we're lucky. Yeah, I'd do anything for him not to have it, anything in the world, but it could have been diagnosed with something much worse. And I think that's something we've got to be thankful for. I'm going to try and share a few tips of how we deal with stuff um, over the next couple of months. How we, how we get our head around stuff, um, how we, what, when we travel, because that's just like he needs his own case for his equipment. But life doesn't have to stop. And we, we from day one, were very much, right, this isn't going to affect your life. Obviously, we've got to really be respectful of the condition because there's a lot of long-term complications if you don't do it right. But I don't, didn't want, or we didn't want him going forward thinking my life is over because it's just not. I mean, I know people that travel in the world with type one diabetes, uh, that are fit and healthy, PE teachers. You know, it's as long as you get your head around it and get your head around the medication, it just needs medication to live. We all, it's like, lots of people need that, but um, as a parent, I think it's been our job to to move forward and make sure that he's, he's dealt with it as positively as he can. And he does, he's amazing, we're so proud of him. And there's some amazing support. I mean, without the, the Jack's diabetic team, we just would not have got through it how we did. They were so positive, but they take no messing with him, um, but yet they support him 100%. I mean, his nurse texts him if she doesn't get the right information of him. She's she's on it and it, it's fantastic. We're, we're, we're so very lucky. So it's all a learning curve, but um, you can live with type 1 diabetes. You can be a sports person with type 1 diabetes. He plays football a couple of times a week. It just means that you have different things to do to adapt to the, the insulin and the sugar and how you deal with it all. But no, he's a shining example of uh, you can rock it as well as you can.